number one gives us or tells us that we have a clock centered at zero zero so I've drawn a clock on here and they tell us that the minute hand is 10 inches long and they want us to find the approximate coordinates to the tip of the minute hand for each of these times so when we're at um, 1205 so let me get this drawn on here so when we're at 1205 we're about here and remember that each of the the um, numbers on the clock is one sixth of a pi because we know that for our unit circle halfway around the clock is pi and then there's six numbers okay on top here so one two three four five six so it splits that pi into sixths so this one so if we're at the one okay that's two sixths of a pi which is the same as pi over three so on your unit circle the ordered pair at two-thirds pi or sorry at pi over three is 0.5 and then 0.87 so now we just need to multiply by 10 because the radius here is 10 inches long so this is just going to be 10 times further than the unit circle value so we'll do 0.5 times 10 and we'll do 0.87 times 10 and we'll get an ordered pair of 5 comma 8.7 so then for 1245 so 1245 would be pointing at this 9 and that's going to be the same um, spot as pi on our unit circle so on our unit circle this is the point negative 1 0 so then we'll multiply by 10 since our radius is 10 inches long and we'll be at the point negative 10 0 then 1255 is here pointing at the 11 okay so that's um, if we kind of look from here that's one two three four pi over six which is the same as two pi over three so this is just going to be a reflection of this point on your unit circle so negative 0.5 and then 0.87 and then again we'll multiply by 10 since the radius is 10 inches long so we get negative 5 and 8.7 as our ordered pair there. Number two, the center of the Ferris wheel is 100 feet off the ground and the radius is 85 feet. Point A is at zero radians. Point B is rotated 7 pi over 12 from A. So that's at 7 pi over 12. And then point C is rotated 5 pi over 4 from a so this one's at 5 pi over 4 for each point a b and c find how high the position on the ferris wheel is off the ground write an equation using sine or cosine function and then estimate the value so for a we know that a is in line with um, the center so we know that the height on point a is at 100 and then um, like on your unit circle, that would be the point zero or one zero, right? So this would be at one zero. And so now this is actually going to be the X coordinate. It's going to be at 85 since our radius is 85 this time instead of one. So the X value is 85. And then since the point is 100 feet above ground, it's the point 85, 100. Now for B, okay, so this ordered pair and remember um, so we're starting at a hundred okay and then we're multiplying by this radius so now this point we have to figure out how much higher the y value is okay than its starting position so the height goes with your sine value on your unit circle so if we think about this um, we know that it started at a hundred Okay, and then we're going to have to add the y value of the coordinate at 7 pi over 12. So that's the sine function. So sine of 7 pi over 12. But then we're going to have to be multiplying by 85 since we have a longer radius. Okay, so since our radius is 85 times longer, okay, we'll multiply by 85. So the 100 that it started at plus 85 times the y value at that coordinate.
Okay, and the y value is represented by the sine function. You can type this into your calculator and you'll get approximately 182 feet. So then for point C, we'll do a similar thing. So we have the starting position because we're at 100 instead of 0, 0. And then we'll add 85 times the sine of this angle, so 5 pi over 4, because that represents the y value, okay, or this height right here to get down to that point. And if you plug this into your calculator, you'll get approximately 40 feet. Number three, a Ferris wheel has a radius of 50 feet and its center is 60 feet off the ground. How many points on the Ferris wheel are, Ferris wheel are at these different heights? So let's just draw this Ferris wheel here so we can put some numbers on it. So um, we've got this Ferris wheel. Okay, it is, the center is 60 feet above ground. Okay, so let me label some points over here. Okay, so we know that this kind of height right here is 60. We know that we have a radius of 50. So if I go 60 down 50, that means it's right here at 10. So it's 10 feet above the ground. Um, and so then this would be zero feet, right? And then we could do the radius up to the top again. So that's gonna be another 50 feet up. So 50 up from 60 would put us at 110. So these are kind of the different heights on our graph. So 30 feet, how many points are at 30 feet above the ground? So 30 feet is going to be in here between 10 and 20. And we can see that that hits our Ferris wheel twice. Or our Ferris wheel will be at that point twice. Um, if we looked at 110, that's just going to be right here at the top. There's only one point just right at the very top of the Ferris wheel. That's 110 feet above the ground. And then five feet above the ground is going to be down here. And so no points um, on the Ferris wheel are ever five feet above the ground because the lowest is 10. Number four, the minute hand on a clock tower is six feet long. At 10 minutes after the hour, the tip of the minute hand is 55 feet above the ground. How high above the ground is the center of the clock face? Um, so let's draw our clock on here. And then um, we're looking at the minute hand is 10 minutes after the hour, okay? So here would be like zero after the hour, five after the hour, 10 after the hour, right? And then we're looking at this as um, in the unit circle. So then that is a pi over six, remember, when you're one number, each number on the unit circle or on the clock is um, pi over six. So this angle right here is pi over six on our unit circle. And that value on our unit circle is 0.87 comma 0.5. So we know that um, this height, so if I kind of like write the height off to the side here. So we know that this height is 55. We want to figure out this height. So this is what we're looking for. So really we want to know how long, what this Y value is on our clock so that we can subtract it to figure out where the center is. And so these unit circle values, are, remember, are when the radius is 1, our radius is 6. So we're going to need to multiply these by 6, and really only this one, because we only care about this height. So we're going to do 0.5 times 6 to find out that this height here is 3. So it's at 55 here, so if we go down to being in line with the center, so 55 minus 3, that's going to mean that the center of the clock is at 52 feet above the ground. Number five, a wheel has a radius of one foot. The center of the wheel is at point O. Okay, so this is point O. Indicate where P will be after the wheel rotates counterclockwise around its center one foot. Okay, so it's going to go this same amount, okay, but around here. So about here is where Q will be. 
So it's going to travel. Um, it's going to travel one foot. So they just want you to label it. And then what is the measure of P O Q? So remember, here's O. So what is this measure? Now, when the arc length here is equal to the radius, and remember, we went one foot, so that's equal to the radius. That's the definition of one radian. So it's an angle measure of one radian. So indicate where point P will be if the wheel rotates counter, counterclockwise around its center, three pi over two feet. Okay, so three pi over two feet is going to be here. And we'll label this R. And so that would be this angle, right? And so what is the measure of that angle? Three pi over two um, radians. Number six, angle O corresponds to point X, Y on the unit circle in quadrant one. So which quadrant would theta plus pi land in? So if we look at here's quadrant one, here's the angle. And if we were to rotate pi radians, okay, that's just a half rotation, right? So that's all the way around here, okay? It's just halfway around the circle. So that's going to be in the opposite quadrant. So this is quadrant one, two, and this would be three. And then in terms of X and Y, what are the coordinates of theta plus R? So this is in the opposite quadrant. So it's going to be the opposite X value and the opposite Y value. Number seven, using a unit circle display, give an example of an angle satisfying each inequality. So I have the unit circle drawn on there. So we just want to come up with just an example of an angle. So there's going to be multiple different answers that would work here. But if cosine of A is greater than zero, so cosine is positive and sine is less than zero. So sine is negative. So remember, cosine is your X values. Sine is your Y values. So we want positive X values and we want negative Y values. So that's going to be in quadrant um, four, right? So positive X, negative Y is going to be down here. So any angle down in the fourth quadrant would work. So I'm just going to say 11 pi over six. You could have said seven pi over four, five pi over two, any of those in there in the fourth quadrant. Um, B, so B wants our cosine to be negative and our sine to be positive. So we want a negative X and a positive Y. So negative X, positive Y is anything in this second quadrant. So any angle in there that you want to use, um, I'm just going to do 5 pi over 6. So I'm just going to stay with my pi over 6 angles. And then part C wants us to do cosine to be less than zero and sine to be less than zero. So we want our X and our Y to be negative. So negative X, negative Y is in this third quadrant. So any of these third quadrant angles would work for that. Um, I'm going to use the pi over six at seven pi over six. Number eight, suppose angle theta, which is in radians, is in quadrant three of the unit circle. Um, if sine of theta is negative 0.45, what are the values of cosine and tan? So if we take a look, here's our unit circle, and then let's draw in um, this angle. So they told us it's in, in third quadrant, so we know that our right triangle is going to be like this. Um, they also told us it's the unit circle, so we know the radius is 1. Sine is the y value, so we know that that's here. So we just need to figure out the x value so that we're able to find the cosine and the tangent. So we'll just do Pythagorean theorem here. So we know x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. 
So x squared um, plus 0 0.2025 when we square out the negative 0.45 equals 1. So we'll subtract this from both sides. And we get x squared is equal to 0.7975. Square root that. Um, and we get 0 0.8930. And then remember that this is a third quadrant x value, so it's going to be negative. So we have negative um, 0.893 for the x. So when we do cosine of this same angle, remember cosine is going to be equal to the x value. So really adjacent divided by hypotenuse, so negative 0.89 divided by 1. And then our tangent is going to be our y value, negative 0.45 divided by our x value, negative 0.893. And so then we could just simplify that by dividing it. So we're going to get positive 0.5039.